Hello everyone and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode we're going to be covering leet code number 20, valid parentheses. This is marked as an easy problem. We'll start by reading through the problem description and examples. So given a string s containing just the characters, these things, the various open and closing braces and parentheses, determine if the input string is valid. An input string is valid if open brackets must be closed by the same type of brackets and open brackets must be closed in the correct order. Example, input S is just this. That's true because there's one open parenthesis and one closed parenthesis and it's in the right order. Example number two, you're past a string that's this. Well, that is also true, I guess, because that is valid closings. This one is closed immediately. This bracket is closed immediately. This curly brace is closed immediately. Those are all properly closed. And the third example, we have a open paran, but then a brace, a closing brace after that. That's false because that's not the right symbol to close it. So in this fourth example, we have an open parentheses and then an open brace. But then we have a closed parentheses and a closed brace. And these are appearing in the wrong order. This open brace needs to be closed before the outermost parentheses is closed. So this one is false. And then the last example is just another one that's true. We have some opening curly braces, opening uh, brackets, but they're closed in the proper order. So the innermost thing needs to be closed first, and it is, so that one is true. And then the constraints for this problem, the length of our input string is going to be between 1 and 1,000. And then the S consists only of parentheses characters. So we're not going to see any weird characters that aren't at least one of these six things, so we don't have to deal with stuff like that. So let's start by pulling up a whiteboard and see about how we could go up coding a solution to this. So I have a potential input string here on this whiteboard just to think about how to approach this problem. And the important thing to realize about this problem is that the innermost parentheses always needs to be closed first. And there's only three different possibilities that that could be. It would be uh, open and closed paran, an open and closed brace, or an open and closed curly brace. Those are the only innermost things that can exist that are valid. So if it's a valid string of open and closings, these things will have to exist somewhere within the depths of the openings and closings. So basically one way we could approach this problem is look in our string for any of these three valid closings that have to exist somewhere in the innermost part of our parentheses and find that and just remove it. So that basically removes the innermost closing and then whatever was outside of that becomes the new innermost thing and then we just remove that again. So for instance, if we had this input string, we'd say, okay, let's see if this exists in here. Well, it does. It exists right here. So we'd want to find that, remove it, and then we'd go to a next iteration of a loop and see, okay, well now, where, what are the innermost things? And we'll remove that. So now the innermost thing would be this closing brace. But if this thing was removed, these would be right next to each other. So it would just be this. And then we would want to remove that. And there's actually another one here, so we'd want to remove that one too. And then we go through a next loop, and at that point, the only thing left in this whole string would just be one opening and closing paran, and we'd remove that. And at the end of all those removals, we'd just end up with an empty string because we've successively gone through and removed everything that has an opening and closing that's valid. So basically, all we're going to do in code here is go through our string and see if any of these exist within them. And if they do, we'll just replace it with nothing. So replace it with an empty string. And we'll keep doing that until 
we don't find any new things we can replace. And if we're left with an empty string, then it was valid. And if we're left with something else, then it was invalid. So let's go ahead and code up this solution. So now we are in the code editor here. We are given a function called is valid. We're past the string s. That's what we're going to be operating on to see if it's uh, valid parentheses. So we're going to call this method inner string replace method. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a loop keeping track of if we're able to replace something every time. And if we're not, then we're going to exit the loop and see if we're left with an empty string or not. So we're going to have a variable to keep track of if we were able to replace something. So we'll start off being replace equals true while we're able to replace something. And then we need to keep track of if we were able to replace something after this iteration of the loop, the length of the string should go down. So we'll keep track of the starting length. We'll just be the length at the start of the loop. And if this goes down after we try to replace things, then we know we are still replacing stuff. So the start length is going to be that. And then for any valid inner parentheses, so inner, so for inner in, and we just need a list of all of those valid possibilities that we want to replace. So they were an opening and closing curly brace, an opening and closing parentheses, and an opening and closing square bracket. So for all of these possibilities, we want to essentially try to replace them with nothing if they exist. That is removing what, wherever they are as the innermost opening and closings and getting rid of them like we looked at on the whiteboard. So s equals s dot replace uh, the inner with nothing. So this is just going to go through the whole string, see if it can find any positions where these exist, because that would be an innermost opening and closing and just basically stripping them out so that we can go to the next iteration of the loop and then see whatever was one step out from that will strip out after that. So after doing those strips, if our start length is still equal to our new length after we strip some stuff. Well, if it's equal to the length still, that means we didn't manage to strip anything, which means replace is now equal to false and will break out of the loop. But if the starting length is different than the current length after trying to strip some things, then we know we stripped something and we need to go through another iteration of the loop. Well, that shouldn't say right, that should say while. And so this should go through the string doing all of the strips from the inside to the outside. So if we're left with an empty string after this while loop exits, that means we stripped out everything in the valid inner to outermost order, and it should be a valid parentheses string we are passed. And if it's anything different, then it should be invalid. So we're just going to return s equal to empty string. So basically, if s is equal to the empty string, this will be true. And if it's not, it'll be false. So this should be a working solution to the problem here. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit. Let's pull over and see the result of the run here. So it did pass in 36 milliseconds faster than about 14% of other Python 3 submissions. So although it did work and it wasn't too difficult, it doesn't seem to be a particularly efficient solution because it's not faster than most of the solutions other people made. And there's various reasons that could be. I mean, we're having to check whether each of these exists in the string over and over again. So that's doing quite a few operations and there's probably ways to avoid doing that. So let's go back to the whiteboard and think about another possible solution to this problem, maybe one that is a little bit faster or better than the one we had just made. So the important thing to note here is that anytime 
we see a closing character, it has to close the last opening character that was seen. So for instance, in this string here, we see uh, this first, that's opening. We see this next, that's opening. We see this next, that's another opening. But then we see our first closing character. And this closing character has to match whatever the last opening character scene was. So when we see this, we can check in this little stack we've made here, is that there? And it is. So in this case, we'd say, okay, this does have a matching thing is the last thing we saw. Then we could remove this from this kind of stack we're making and then say, okay, what's the next thing? Okay, it's another closing thing. Uh, what is the last thing we've seen on our stack that hasn't been crossed out yet? Okay, it is another closing brace. We could cross that off. We'd go to the next thing. What's left on our stack? It's a closing brace. We cross that off, etc. So instead of kind of replacing things like we did before, we could keep track of all the opening characters. And then as soon as we see a closing character, we can remove the last opening character that we saw using this kind of stack data structure. So basically, anytime we see an opening character, we'll push it onto a stack. And then anytime we see a closing character, we'll try to match it up with whatever the last thing on the stack is and remove that from the stack. And after going through the entire string doing that, we should be left with an empty string where we were always able to match the closing character, whatever it was, with the last thing that was on the stack. And if that's ever not the case, then we know it's not valid and we just immediately return false. And a solution using this method should be faster than the one we made first because we're not having to look through the string many different times and trying to see if things exist in it and replace them. We're basically just going to have to go through once. We'll just loop through the string once and we'll keep track of all the openings and cross off the closings as we see them. So that should just be a straight up O of N solution instead of something where we're potentially having to search through the string several times. So let's go back into the code editor and add this solution as well. So we're going to call this new approach, close the last scene opening symbol with stack, because that's an important part of the problem. So I did go ahead and prepare uh, this ahead of time just because I didn't want to type all this out. But basically all this is doing is giving us a little dictionary that's mapping each opening character to its closing character called close map. So an open paren is mapped to a close, an opening uh, curly brace to a close, etc. So we're going to need to use that just to make sure we can match things up efficiently. And now we have to initialize the stack that is going to keep track of all of the opening characters we've seen in order that we see them. So we'll just call that, say, opens. It'll be start off as an empty list. And then as we see those opening characters, we'll append them onto the list. And now all we have to do is write our single for loop and go through and implement the logic. So for symbol in S, um, if the symbol, symbol is an opening character, which is anything in our close map. Um, the keys of the close map are all the opening characters. So if symbol, um, that is, if symbol in close map dot keys, then we want to put it onto our stack. So opens dot append symbol. So that's saying anytime we see an opening character, we want to put it onto our openings stack or list here. So now if we didn't see an opening character, that means we're seeing a closing character and we need to handle that case. So in that case, elif, else if. So if we have a closing character and our opening stack is empty, that means there's nothing in there to close it off against, which means we're seeing 
a closing character before we saw the appropriate matching open character. And if that's the case, this isn't a valid parentheses, so we just want to say false on that. So if opens is empty in that case, so we're looking at a closing character, but we don't have anything to match it off against, that's gonna be false. Now there's another scenario where the closing character we're looking at here might be the wrong thing and we should return false. And that's if it doesn't match up with the last opening character that we saw. So or if the symbol we are looking at does not match up with the last thing that we saw. So our close map, the last thing that we saw was opens, the last thing in opens, which is opens dot pop. So basically we're treating this list as a stack. So opens dot pop is going to take the last opening character that we saw and take it off the end of the list. And we're going to pass it into close map to find what the appropriate closing character should be. So for instance, if the last thing we saw was a open parentheses, we're popping that off of the end and then by passing it into the indexer for close map, we're saying, okay, this should be the matching closing character. So if our closing character is not equal to that matching closing character that it should be, then we know that it matched the wrong type of thing. And this is also then an invalid uh, sequence and we should return false. So basically if the opens is empty or if the closing character doesn't match the closing character that should be, we need to return false. So now this loop here should be going through the whole string. Anytime it sees an opening character, it will put it in our open stack. And anytime it sees a closing character, it will pop off that last opening character we saw, see if it matches up. And if it does, it'll continue on to the next iteration. If it doesn't, it'll just exit and say false. But after this runs through the entire string, if we haven't found a situation where we didn't match what we wanted to, that means we got through the whole string and didn't return false yet. So if we get to the end and that's the case and we still haven't returned yet, that means the only other situation where we might have an invalid string is if we had more opening characters than closing characters. That would mean that the open stack here still has some opening characters on it that haven't been closed yet. And if that's the case, it's gonna be false. So what we can just do is return, well, if opens is empty, that means all the opening parentheses were appropriately closed. So basically all this is saying is if we manage to close everything that we opened, then we should return true. And if we didn't manage to close everything that we opened, then this will be false. Oh, I noticed a problem here. We're going to have to return false, not just say false. So I'm gonna go ahead and click submit on this one and hopefully there are no issues. It is running, let's pull over and see the run. So this time we got a speed of 28 milliseconds, which is a, a bit faster than the first attempt. And that was faster than 82% of other Python 3 submissions. So I hope this gave you a couple ideas about how you could approach a problem like this and hopefully also illustrate a bit about the value of a stack data structure. So something where you put things in sequentially and then you take off the last thing that you saw first. So a last in first out type data structure can be useful in certain applications. So thanks for watching and keep coding.